I'm gonna show you what I think is the best mini rack, server rack, cabinet that you can get for a small environment, for a home lab, for even a small spot in an office, right? What I found is a long time ago, when I started off uh, my journey in tech and I started building my own stuff at home and I wanted to learn things, I started buying myself all of these little mini PCs. And then I had a big collection of them. I didn't know where to put them. Like they were just sort of everywhere. They were sort of hiding them behind TVs, behind all these things, putting them on desks, putting them in cupboards. And then eventually when I got to a certain age, I bought myself a big server server rack because I had some big equipment as well. I had some proper big servers, some NAS devices, some big switches, all of that. And um, and that was, that was okay. I mean, it was a big unit. So I had to find a relevant spot for it. But then over time, it just got really, really annoying. I mean, look, here is, here is my server rack right now. I mean, look at it. It, it's nice. I mean, it's 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 sort of compact. I mean, comparing it to what you may find in a big workplace, it isn't that big, but it still is big. Right, it's not, it's not something that most people can probably have sitting in the corner of a room. They don't have space for something of this size. There's gotta be a better way. So I'm gonna show you the journey that I went through, this little project moving from this big server cabinet to this tiny server cabinet. Yeah, the desk PI. I mean, PI standing for like Raspberry Pi. They do Raspberry Pi cases and that's sort of what they were known for and what they grew. But now they make this cabinet, which is the mini PC's dream. I know it was for me at least. I mean, this is amazing. So I'm gonna show you some of my tech gear, uh, some of the mini PCs that I've got in my old rack. And then we're gonna go through a project setting them up on my new rack. And along the way, I'll give you some recommendations about which mini PCs you may wanna be playing around with. As always, love it if you followed along by clicking on the subscription button, clicking on the bell so you don't miss out on any of our video releases. And then we get into all of the range of the mini PCs and lots of different combinations. We've got our switches, our firewalls, uh, all sort of in there. And that's of course all been nicely cabled on the front and on the back. And now, hey, it's a new era. We now need to remove all the little computers. And I think because the little computers deserve a new home, we're gonna put them into this new little space. So here is the spread. Now we're gonna to try to fit these into our new little rack as nicely as possible. Some of these I've had for a while. Some of these are fairly new, but I love every single one and I use every single one for different purposes. To start off, we've got our Mac mini. This is a Mac. Now back in the day, it used to be my main media server running Mac OS, but then over time I went and removed that Mac OS and I installed uh, VMware ESXi. Also got a HP mini PC with also VMware ESXi. We've also got a Protect Lee computer. This thing is a powerhouse. I absolutely love it. Um, what else have we got? We've got a B-Link. We've got a GMK Tech. We've got a couple of Intel NUX. We've got a Umbrell. We've got a R86S computer and a Actually, it's not a Nintendo. This is a Raspberry Pi. Now, all of these have been set up for different purposes. Some are running Windows. Some are running Linux, different flavors of Linux. Some of these are running, as I said, VMware ESXi. And these are all used for really various purposes. Um, I'm using them for testing. I'm running them for development environments. I'm using them for my own learning where I can go and build some tech and then go and play around. And before I deploy it in a real life environment, I can just try it in here first. Now these three are probably my three favorite ones of them all. I think they're the, they're, they're the nicest ones. I think they look the nicest. We've got a Zimmer blade, which is the one on the top, and then a couple of Zimmer boards. Now these Zimmer boards, uh, I've had these for a while and I love them. Uh, you can remove the operating system. I mean, they, they, they can run Linux, but they can also run other operating systems. And they just look like, I love computers where you can see the bits, right? The Zimmer boards are just like a big old heatsink with lots of different ports. You can install all of your hard drives right on the side, allows you to install PCI Express cards, these things are just awesome and they're a powerhouse. Like they are actually advertised as a essentially mini servers, like a main board server. Uh, and they do pack a punch, I absolutely love them. But hey, for all of these PCs, we're gonna try to go and stick them inside of our rack. So let's see how we go. Now, of course, the big difference between my old rack and my new rack is the size. I mean, from a, from a height perspective, 
Um, you get the, the, these things called rack units. So you can stick like a 24, 48 rack units and you can sort of see how high and things like that are. Uh, and you stick fully fledged servers and, and NAS devices and UPSs and switches and things like this into a traditional rack, right? Which is what you'd find in a comms room, in a server room, in a business, in a data center. This is not that. This is smaller, significantly smaller and made really for the home user. It's made for that small compact setup. So you can actually put mini PCs. I mean, it's it's sort of been made for Raspberry Pi. So you can have all your Raspberry Pis in their own little enclosures and have clusters worth of Raspberry Pis. But in my case, yes, I've got a Raspberry Pi couple, uh, but I've also got all these other mini PCs. And I love the fact that I can use these in different configurations and they're not gonna be lost in this big, big rack because this is a small rack. Do we really need user manuals? I don't know. But hey, look, you've got a whole bunch of information around the mounting holes. So there's obviously lots of mounting holes that you can use to set up your Raspberry Pis and everything similar. Looks good. We'll look at that later. Now, uh, where's the front? I'm gonna assume, yeah, that's the front. So that's the front of the unit right over here. Look at that. So we've already got a few of these little covers comes with a few trays, which is beautiful. So, hey, I didn't know that. So I got this not knowing that there was all these little accessories. So just be aware of that. Uh, you may not need to go and buy yourself all of these additional trays if this comes enough. So this particular one, one, two, three covers on the front and then like a smaller tray and a larger tray right over here. Love the fact that it's got a couple of big old handles on the top, which is really cool. And Screws, bolts, I'm assuming. Sides of the units, looks like they're Perspex, so they're not glass. Uh, Perspex clear, which looks nice. Now, whether they will scratch or not, we'll find out in time. But I'm telling you, the, um, the, the sturdiness of the unit, you got like, I don't know, aluminium, it's a metal of some sort. On the front, on the top, uh, it's like plasticky, we'll say. Let's look inside like, the box first. Okay, so a little screwdriver. Nuts and bolts, different sorts of configurations here. Looks like there's a whole bunch of different sizes. That's handy. And then what's this thing? Now this is a, oops, this is a Desk PI KL P24. Wonder what this is. I'm not actually sure what this one is, but let's see. Okay, interesting. Hey, we're gonna find this out as we go. KL P4 Desk PI. Now there's two of them. Looks like I've got a HDMI on one side. You've got a USB-C, another USB-C, and what looks like a mini HDMI. Now, is this, uh, oh, and there's a little switch on the front. Little thing on the front that I can actually switch between PI5. Maybe it's like a little switch jump box thing. I don't know, I'm, let, let's check the manual. Let's check the manual. What is this thing? Uh, uh, interesting. Okay, so this is this looks like it is for depends on the Raspberry Pi. So if you've got a Raspberry Pi 4B or a Raspberry Pi 5, then you've got one of these two. And what it says is the board converts the micro HDMI port to a standard HDMI interface ensuring compatibility. Onboard switch. So this is an onboard switch allows. So it looks like it lets you do HDMI conversion, but also an onboard switch allows for easy toggling between a Raspberry Pi 5 and 4 settings provided for flexibility of different configurations. So um, the little picture sort of shows me that I can actually plug this into my Raspberry Pi and uh, do some little conversions or some switching, which is uh, quite handy. There you go, love it. The thing about this unit is uh, you can fully customize it, right? So you can get the, the rack itself and it comes with a few little bits and pieces inside, but then there's all these different options. So what I'm gonna recommend is whenever you're considering any rack, whether this is a small rack or even a big rack configuration, plan ahead, right? Have a think about what you're gonna get because in a big rack, for example, some tech, you're gonna get rails so you can rail things in. Others, well, you can't. So you have gotta get shelving units and you've gotta think about the power and you're gonna think about cable management and how you're gonna be patching things together. And this unit allows me to literally just customize the whole thing. So I could go and get myself these things. How cool is this? So this is a little shelving unit, right? Easy, small, compact, and I can just rack that into the front of it. And then I can put my little PCs 
on there, my, you know, my Raspberry Pis, etc. And then there's also a companion unit, which is this one over here. And this one has a big old hole down the bottom. So it's gonna allow me to do, obviously, from a ventilation perspective, it's gonna help. But also, this is now more custom built, so I can screw things in and make it a little bit more compact. So you can sort of go for the more traditional shelving unit or one such as that. Always thinking about powering, this is what we get, okay? Little power unit. So I've got my outputs, I've got seven outputs and the single input into here. And then I can run the powers into all of my PCs. You know, you've got all these power units, right? That come with all of your mini PCs. It can get really annoying in a big old mess to power all that sort of stuff. And then you've got to get power boards and it just gets PDUs and it just gets really, really messy. While this little distribution unit makes it very, very easy running all of my powers into the front, into the back, and then run that into my mains power. And what I love is on the front of the unit, I've got a little on off switch for each individual channel. And then our patch panel. Now this patch panel comes with 12. So I'm gonna recommend when you go and design your unit, and you think about how many mini PCs you've got. Some of those mini PCs, especially some of the ones that I've got, have got multiple points, right? Multiple ethernet points. So think about how many points you need. So I got myself one, but if you need more than 12 ethernet points, then you run 12 in. Now, the nice thing is that this is all spliced up for me. I don't have to go cut cables or anything. So on the front is one end and on the back is the other end. So your standard cut six, Hey, that's cool. We're using a pretty modern technology there. Input and then output, and then I can run that accordingly into my relevant switching. Helping to keep everything neat, of course, is your cable management. Now you can get one, you can get many, you don't have to get these at all, but if you like things to be neat like I do, I got myself one of these so that I can actually run my cables through the back and just sort, sort of tighten things up. You may wanna get one at the very top, one down the very bottom, maybe even one in the middle to sort of just route your cables accordingly. Now, when you're, of course, racking your unit, you're gonna have all these little spots where there's nothing in there. So that's where you may wanna get a little cover on the front so that your overall, so overall that your rack just looks a little bit nicer and then a whole bunch of these. Ethernet cables, they come in different sizes, you can customize them. I mean, any ethernet cable will do, but these are the nice thinner ones, which is cool, because you know some of these bigger ones just get too thick. So you get some of these thinner ones, and it just makes the whole environment a little bit better. So hey, now that you know all the bits that we've got, let's go and start racking this whole unit up. Management units, accordingly and uh, we're gonna go from there. Now, the other thing, of course, I've got all of my trays. Now, um, I probably don't need as many trays, more because the unit itself came with some, I think, sufficient amount of trays. Now, the other thing is, um, I'm not gonna put units on top of each other if I can avoid it. Like, I'm not gonna put one mini PC and then another PC directly on top, which a lot of people sort of get into that bad habit of putting computers on top of each other. And that may be okay if you've got, you know, space issues or you don't have many of these sort of trays, but you want good airflow. So I'm gonna sort of consider good airflow between all of my units. The nice thing is that uh, I got a whole bunch of these and I got adapters as well. Okay, so I've got a little adapter where I can put on the front of my cable. So then the specific computers that, uh, you know, this particular plug doesn't plug into, I've got the adapter. Now, the only other thing, which um, is a little bit frustrating, but I'm gonna have to try to figure it out as best as I can, is three of my units actually take USB-C power. Uh, so it would have been great if one of these came with a little adapter to convert that to maybe USB-C. Uh, so it just means that those other computers I'm gonna have to run separately with USB-C power and uh, we're good to go. All right, so that's it. Now I've, I've sort of worked out a basic plan about how I sort of want to position these. I'm gonna start with the bigger computers down the very, very bottom and then sort of work my way up. Down the very bottom, of course, we've got our two longer computers. These are, of course, the two larger ones of these mini PCs, the Mac Mini and then the HP one. We've then got four of the NUX, right? So we've got the two Intel ones, there's a couple of other ones, and then sort of tucked in the corner there, we've got one of the Zimmer blades in there. Then we move up to, the, we've got like a dedicated shelf there uh, for the Protectly, a shelf above that for two of my Zimmer boards. 
I love the Zimmer boards, hence why I've got two of them. This is probably one of my favorite mini PCs, big old heatsink, and just packs an absolute punch. Uh, and those two things are absolutely fantastic. Uh, they're both on a shelf. Above that one, we've got another shelf. On the left side, we've got our R8 6S, and above that, a little, little PC. An umbrella is the computer uh, running Casa OS, which is the Linux distribution. And then on the right, of course, there is our Raspberry Pi, which has a beautiful Nintendo K. So there is the overall spread on the front, and it looks nice. Now, the back, of course, does not look anything like this. The back is completely different. And this is where you sort of want to get really creative when it comes to your cable management. I mean, the nice thing is that I managed to get all of the same sort of thinner ethernet cables, our powers split across two different powers there. Now, the reason I had to do that is essentially that the power adapters that were running into, you see that the input, like if you look at the very top, we've got our power there, the distribution unit. On the left, you've got the input. Well, that needs to be powerful enough to be able to support all of the seven channels. And in my case, it wasn't, hence why I've got two of them and I've got the power spread across those. And, and of course, the beautiful thing about this is I can easily just pick up the entire unit with everything in there and just transport it absolutely anywhere. The back is very, very easily accessible, so I can plug in my screens if I want to, my keyboards and mice accessible to all of my USB ports, which makes it very, very easy to use, very, very easy to transport. It's amazing. Hey, if you want to pick up some of the uh, some of the gear, some of the PCs that we talked about, if you want to pick up the Desk PI itself, down below this video description, I've got links to it right over there, including the Zimmer board, which is probably one of my favorite mini PCs out right now. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Love it if you click on the subscription button. On the bell, give us a like, right? Thumbs up if you like this video as well, and stay tuned for the next video as we continue talking about all things tech. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we will see you then.